don't dream small and then think big. I mean, don't just dream small and start doing it small and then thinking that it's going to get big. Dream big, reverse engineer it, meaning break it down to smaller steps and start with the first one. The reason why I'm talking about this today is because a couple of days ago, I was talking to a young lady who is becoming a new entrepreneur and I was given some advice. And that reminded me of one of my clients from four years ago who came to me. She was a life coach and she was struggling to get clients. And she told me it was very difficult to get clients. She was getting one here and there and she never knew where the next client was coming from. There was nothing happening online for her. And she decided she wanted to start selling self-care items like soaps, feminine self-care um, soaps and things. Before we get too far, if we haven't met yet, I'm Karma Hunter, brand mentor, conversion strategist. I help online coaches and entrepreneurs create their flagship offer and plan their launches with evergreen systems and strategies so that they can scale to 10K months without social media burnout and without worrying about where their next client is coming from. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get all the updates about my new videos about online coaching, getting clients, online marketing that I post weekly. And don't forget to check out the description under my videos for free resources and some trainings. I appreciate all the love and please hit the like button so that I know you're getting value out of these videos. So she told me she wanted to start a feminine self-care line and sell soaps for feminine care, um, oils and, and you know, self-care product. Now, after I started asking about her vision, um, brands that she likes, people she looks up to, influencers that she likes, she gave me a few names and she told me that she wants to be like one of them and um, she has a self-care line. So, of course, it made all sense. But here's the problem. She was trying to resort to the wrong thing. Now, when I say don't dream small and then try to get big, meaning when she looks up this coach, this influencer, she sees that she's selling feminine self-care and she thinks that that's how she's making money. But in reality, that person didn't start selling soaps and self-care items and then got the recognition and got the, got the brand that she has now. It happened the other way around. The reason why she's able to sell those soaps and the eggs and the oils is because she built an audience first. She didn't start with selling those. So at the end of the day, my client didn't want to start selling soaps. She didn't want to be the soap lady. She wanted to be a thought leader. She wanted to be a coach. She wanted to inspire other women. She wanted to get up on that stage one day and talk to thousands of women and inspire them. She didn't want to sell soap. She wanted to go out there and tell her audience, tell other women to be in tune their feminine energy, to start loving themselves, to bring out their sexuality, to use their feminine energy as an advantage. And it wasn't the soap. Because when you see these people that you look up to online, you see them selling some um, low ticket products in the front end. That's not what brought them there. In most cases, they started and built that audience and that's, the, that's how they're able to sell those products. Or those products are just a gateway to how they really make money. So in my client's case, she thought it was going to go in the order of soap. And once she starts selling soap, she thought she was going to um, start building an audience because people are buying now soap from her and feminine care items. And then she thought that she was going to get recognition because now there's more and more people buying from her. And then she thought that she could transition into influencing, uh, people showing, Oh, here's what I do. And, and, uh, you can do it too. No, that's in most cases, that's not how it goes. 
you got to start inspiring people and influencing people and you start getting some recognition because of that inspiration and influence and maybe um, education you're giving. And once you start getting recognized, that's how you start growing an audience. And then you start selling products like that, okay? Just like one of my clients recently, she's a coach as well, and she came to me because she wants to start selling a planner. When we look at her lead generation and her strategy, she wants to start selling a planner because she thinks it's easier to sell the planner and it's is it's going to be quicker to make money off of this planner because people are not buying her high ticket item as much as she would have liked. Well, it's not because of the price they weren't buying the high ticket item. It was because of the process that wasn't actually qualifying them into becoming a client. So she didn't have that process or that strategy just yet. But selling a planner for $20, $30, whatever it is, right? This is a small item and the way you promote and sell that item is completely different than what actually brings you the money of your high ticket item, right? So now you're going to end up with a completely different business model. Now you have actually two different businesses. You have a high ticket business, but you want to actually promote the small ticket item. That's not how it goes, okay? Planner comes last. Planner is going to be a gateway for you to get leads. That planner is not even going to make you money. I started my launch planner after making sure that I had a value ladder that was aligned and I had a marketing and sales process that actually worked well organically. Because think about it, if you're selling a planner for $20, how many planners will you need to make $10,000 versus if you were to focusing on selling your coaching offer, your flagship offer for $2,000 or whatever it is, right? So you're not going to start selling things just because they're smaller on the price. That's not how it's going to happen. You're going to end up trying to do things all over again for different ways because now you want to sell this planner, right? So first get your value ladder, your offer to a point where it's actually making you money organically and then start working on those smaller offers to generate more leads to you so that you can actually sell more of your higher ticket items okay so a, a, a smaller item like a planner or a soap or a self-care item is not what's going to generate money in the end that's that comes after you build that audience so that you can start generating leads from that audience I hope this was helpful I wanted to talk about this for a while now and I appreciate the young lady for reminding me um, of talking about this again and I hope to see you later.